Welcome to another episode of Andrew Plays. Um, I'm, I'm your host, Andrew Ambrose, and I hope you're having a fantastic day. Today's episode, I'm going to be playing another Intellivision game. Last time, we were doing uh, Burger Time, um, the best-selling Intellivision game ever, um, and one of the most highly praised games for the Intellivision. Um, this time, we're doing another um, game that's highly praised within the Intellivision community. It was also, I assume, a big success. And that game is Beauty and the Beast from Imagic, released in 1982. Now, um, some of you might be confused by this, th and before you ask, no, this is not based off of the famous French tale of Beauty and the Beast, made popularized by the masterpiece that is the 1991 uh, Disney animated film. Um, this game is... Um, this, the Beauty and the Beast in this game isn't referring to um, the story, but rather the idea of like the beauty killing the beast and you know that sort of thing. Um, this game actually um, is more of a game, a platforming game inspired by Donkey Kong, um, but it's well, it takes its own ideas and it's it really is a wonderful, fun game that I enjoy very much and I highly recommend you check out. Hell up. You, you guys uh, might remember uh, Game Attacker. Um, 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 I've, you may remember last year, him and I, we reviewed, um, we teamed up to review the arcade version of Mario Brothers. Um, well, in his own series, he actually did a review of this game. Of the, 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 this game. And, well, you, I, I recommend you check that out. Um, as well as the game itself, because it, it truly is a wonderful, fun game that I'm and I wish could come to other platforms. Um, I don't know if it's if it was made for any other platforms besides in television, but yeah, this game truly is awesome. And uh, well, Imagic um, truly was one of the best developers for the home consoles back in the uh, early '80s. They unfortunately went under and are now owned by Activision. Um, but they made a lot of awesome games like Atlantis, Demon, Atta uh, Demon Attack, and of course Beauty and the Beast. And well, we're going to check that game out today right now, so uh, let's begin. So basically, he plays this dude in yellow clothes. There's this giant guy holding a girl. Um, what you have to do, you have to, cl you have to uh, climb, you have to get past these... Uh, various um, things like these uh, orange balls and the birds and every time there's an open window uh, I, I, I lost all my lives in only a matter of seconds basically um, you have to climb up to the top where that big guy is that's uh, Hank the Horrible I think that's, I think that's his name you have to uh, dodge all the objects whenever a window opens up you climb through it and once you get to Hank, uh, he moves up the building. I um, mean, you just keep moving up and up and up until you reach the top. And then um, you save the lady, and Hank falls all the way to the bottom. And well, then you begin again at higher difficulties. It's similar to Donkey Kong, except more in tune with the, uh, King Kong in a way. Except I'm sure this dude is like a, a regular human being. A, ver a very big human being, but still an actual human being instead of a giant uh, gorilla like Don like King Kong or even Donkey Kong um, but yeah this game uh, this game truly is um, a frenzy because you have to avoid all these orange balls I think they're supposed to be barrels they could I don't know exactly what they are I haven't read the instruction manual you also gotta watch out for the birds that come um, thankfully, um, the, uh, the lady you're trying to save will throw down hearts at you. That'll make you invincible, so it helps to get those as you're climbing to the very top. Um, yeah, that's pretty much the game, but it's really, really fun. Like, just, it's very fast-paced, you keep... You guys gotta keep on moving. And of course, it gets more narrow as you get to the top. Makes it, making it much harder to traverse. Um. And well, yeah. 
I don't know if there was an Atari version of this, but goddamn, I would love there to be one because this game would be perfect for Atari if someone could fit it on there. Just gotta jump over the bear, the oranges. And Hank goes falling, hits the ground with a giant shake. Um, a plane comes by and he whisks you and the lady away. And then you start again. And you can actually um, accidentally fall off the edge of the building. If you go too far to the left or to the right, you'll actually um, accidentally um, fall all the way down to the bottom, which is a major pain in the butt. Um, but, yeah, you just gotta be careful. Especially since um, your main character, he tends to nudge forward a lot. Like, like, w like when you let go of it, he'll still continue to move forward a little bit, so it's kind of a momentum sort of thing. Um, so you got you got to really be careful with um, how you move in this game. Get that heart, and of course you can see um, the, the uh, orange balls split into smaller yellow balls um, in the second round. In this uh, second loop. Ah oh, crap! Ah, uh, there I just fell all the way down to the bottom, and I have to start all over. Yeah, you really gotta be careful with that. Aw, oh, man. You gotta be really careful with this. You can't afford to... make one little screw-up, because it can really affect you. It's like, one wrong move and you can go all the way down to the bottom where you have to start again. Like, imagine in Donkey Kong, like... You accidentally did something that made Mario, like made uh, Mario, um, go all the way back to the beginning of the uh, the the uh, barrel stage. Like if you're like on the the rivet stage, which is the fourth and final um, level, you have to go through in each loop. Um, like imagine he was on there, he did something by accident, and he had a and he went all the way back to the beginning of the first uh, stage with the barrels. Now, imagine if that happened in Donkey Kong. That's kind of what. That's pretty much what, what the equivalent of that would be in there, what, which happens in this game. You really, yeah, you really gotta be careful. Like, or it could be just my controller having a little truck accidentally keep pushing it uh, left. Um, 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 and not going up when I want it to, but. I don't know. I don't know how this, how well this controls with the real and television um, controller, because I've never played. I don't think I've ever played this on the real and television, only in the emulators with a modern controller. But I'm sure it should be fine. I I know for a fact that in, uh, Burger Time on the television controls great with the control with the original controllers. Um. That might be the same here, I'm not sure though. Hank goes falling, and I save the girl again. And we're taken away. Now it's time for the third loop. Well done! Thanks, Mr. Biplane Dude. the compliments. Oh crap. Those rats got me. Good job. Thanks once again. Alright. Got the heart. Well done. background some just some people breaking uh, blowing leaves outside my house yeah there's not much I can do about that noise in the background uh 
yeah, um, I think I'll play one more round of it in this game. supposed to be are they oil drums are they barrels are they uh, uh I, don't, I don't know what else they could be I, I don't know what those orange what else those orange circles are could be i mean i'm, I'm sure i'm sure that i mean i i know i know by reading the instructions but i don't have them right now i mean i could read them after this but but yeah, I don't, for now, I don't know what exactly they're supposed to be. I mean, I can tell what everything else is, like the rats and the birds. Um, um, but as for those orange things, I have no clue what they are. But I'm sure the instructions will say once I get to read them for this game. This dude could fall off an entire building and not, like, straight up die from hitting a head-on colli collision with the ground with his head. Yet, he can't handle those orange balls and, and all, um, the rats and the birds. Eh, whatever. It's, it's one of those video game things. Um, but yeah, that was, uh... Oh, I accidentally started another game, but yeah, that that's Beauty and the Beast for the Intellivision. A wonderful, very challenging, but very well-made um, platforming um, game for the Intellivision. It, it's well-praised in the Intellivision community, and diver deservedly so, because of, it's, ju it's just fun. Like, if you love Donkey Kong, then you'll love um, Beauty and the Beast, because, well, I love Donkey Kong, and, well, I also love Beauty and the Beast on Intellivision. So, uh, yeah, definitely try to find a way to play this game, because it truly is one of the best that the Intellivision, um, has to offer, among many other awesome games. The Intellivision was a really good console. Um, had a lot of great games, and it lasted quite long, from 1979 to 1990... Yeah, 1990, or 91. It lasted very well. It actually lasted beyond the American game crash of 83. Um, so, uh, yeah. But anyways, um, thank you guys for watching another episode of Andrew Plays. I hope you enjoyed it. The Lupin Top 10 video, uh, you might have heard me mention it before here on my videos or on Twitter. That will be available soon. I'm nearing the end of its production. I just need to finish editing. Uh, but yeah, this will it'll be fun, and it'll be, yeah, I don't know what else to say, but yeah, thank you guys so much for stopping by once again for another Andrew Plays episode, and as always, um, I'm your host, Andrew Ambrose, and I'll catch you later.